MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Amit Tata, School of Management, George Mason University. In this segment, we will introduce definitions and basic concepts associated with simple linear regression. When you're doing simple linear regression, you're basically trying to express the relationship between two variables using a straight line. So let's take an example. Uh, let's say we have uh, a gas station and for sake of simplicity, we will assume this gas station sells only premium gas at $4.25 a gallon. And we randomly sample uh, a few uh, drivers as they come in and pump gas. So they go up to the pump, uh, pump certain amount of gas and they pay for it by credit card. So for, the, for each driver sampled, we record what volume of uh, gas they have pumped, in this case 15.5 gallons and uh, their payment $65.88 on, the, on their credit card. So we have a set of 22 uh, drivers who have been sampled. And if we draw a scattergram of uh, these 22 drivers, so for each driver we have the volume on the x-axis and the payment on the y-axis, so we have uh, 22 data points here, we find that these data points fall exactly on a straight line absolutely no deviation from this straight line and that shouldn't be surprising because in this uh, situation the physics of the situation says uh, specifies that the payment in dollars is determined absolutely exactly by the volume of uh, gas that's been pumped in gallons in fact the relationship is payment equals volume of gas times four dollars 25 cents uh, a gallon this is an example of a functional relationship so using this relationship, we can introduce two terms, a dependent variable and an independent variable. Here, the variable that we are trying uh, to explain is payment using the variable volume. Volume is the independent variable. Payment is the dependent variable. Okay. So essentially what we are saying here is that the variable volume is able to explain the variation in payment absolutely exactly using this relationship payment equals volume times 4.25 if you tell me the volume i can tell you exactly the payment that was involved with absolutely zero error so this is a functional relationship very well then now let's take two different variables um, for our uh, next example so here we have a, a set of houses uh, let's see how many houses we have looks like we have 20 houses and for each house, we have recorded the square footage and its price. Okay, so in this case, the dependent variable is price and the independent variable is square footage, meaning we are trying to explain the variation in price using square footage. So square footage is the independent variable, price is the dependent variable. Now, when you plot the scattergram of these two variables, the square footage being on the x-axis and price being on the y-axis, you will notice that these data points do not fit exactly on a straight line, but they seem to be trending upwards as one would expect. Uh, a house that is um, larger in square footage should have a higher price. But why isn't the fit exact? Why don't these data points fit exactly on a straight line? For a variety of reasons, one of them being there are many other factors that determines the price of a house. For example, what its school district is, what its lot size is, and, and so forth. So we wouldn't expect the fit to be exact. We say here that these two variables, square footage and price, have a statistical relationship between the two of them. Okay. So in our case, in the example over here, the dependent variable is price and the independent variable is square footage. Okay. So in this, in, in this circumstance, which is the more common one where the data points do not fit exactly onto a straight line, uh, what does it mean to do simple linear regression? First of all, the term uh, simple, I think you can guess why the term linear is they were trying to explain, the, express the relationship between two variables using a straight line. So that's where the linear uh, term com word comes from. And uh, the term simple comes from the fact that there's only one uh, independent variable. There will always be exactly one dependent variable, but there may be more than one independent variables when we will see that when we discuss multiple regression. But when you have one independent variable, it's called simple linear regression because this is the simplest you know, type of explanation that you can do with one independent variable only. 
So when these data points do not fit exactly on a straight line, what does it mean to do uh, simple linear regression? I think you can guess what that means is the straight line that we're trying to fit through the data point, somehow we want the best fit. Okay. Later on, when we do the math, we will see what the best fit means. But informally, I think you can um, um, uh, sort of guess what the, what what a best fit line would look like. First of all, you can mathematically prove that the best fit line has to pass through the centroid of the data points, namely x bar and y bar. X bar and y bar is the middle of the data points. Okay, and you can prove mathematically that the best fit line has to pass through the data points. Now. Uh, having said that, what else should the best fit uh, line, uh, what other properties should it have? Informally, uh, you should have uh, roughly the same spread uh, of the data points uh, on either side of the line. Technically speaking, the, the method that is used to do a, a best fit, to determine what the best fit line is, is what is called OLS, ordinary least squares. So anytime you see the term squares by now in your statistics class, you know that squares refers to deviation from something and you square that difference. Okay. So in this case, you can see uh, for each data point, it is a little bit away from the line, uh, fitted line, because the fit is not exact. So when we say least squares, we are thinking about these errors, how an error representing a deviation of a data point from uh, from the fitted line. So we want to fit the line uh, in such a way that the sum of the squared errors, so for each data point, we figure out how far it is from the line, and that's the error, square that, and then add up that error squared error term for all the data points. So we want to fit the line in such a way that the sum of those squared errors is the smallest, ordinary least squares. That's how um, Excel determines what the best fit line is and there is a closed form expression uh, that tells you what that best fit line is. Okay, so when you run a regression in Excel, as we will see later on in subsequent uh, video clips, the output from Excel uh, consists of two parts. One part of the Excel output will give you the equation of the fitted line. Okay, so the of this best fit line and you know that the equation of a, a straight line simply consists of telling you what the intercept is and what the what the slope of the line is. Once you know the slope and intercept, you know the line exactly. So one part of the Excel output is the equation of the fitted line. But the bulk of the remainder of the regression output is a whole bunch of diagnostics that tells you the quality of the fitted line so that you can determine how confident you should be in using this straight line, uh, fitted line, uh, to explain the dependent variable using the independent variable. Okay, so I've just introduced uh, three terms so far. One is what's a dependent variable, what's an independent variable, and I've just in also introduced uh, the terms term ordinary least squares. Okay, that's the technique that's used to determine the best uh, fit line. So. Now, uh, what kind of patterns, I think for now it's, it may be useful to get an idea of what kind of visual patterns of these dots one can expect. So here's one example. You could see a pattern of dots that's sloping upwards, in other words, from uh, southwest to northeast. Okay. So uh, these are, so if you fitted a, a line through these data points, the line would be sloping upwards. So this is a positive relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. An example would be the relationship between height and weight of individuals. The relationship would not be perfect because there are lots of other factors besides weight, uh, besides height, I mean, that determine what the weight of a person is. But clearly, in general, the taller the person, the heavier I would expect that person to be. Or for that matter, if you take the price of a car and the insurance premium, I would expect a positive relationship between those two. As the price of the car goes up, the insurance premium, generally speaking, should go up. It won't be perfect, the relationship, but it should go up. Similarly, here's another example where the pattern of um, uh, data values, the independent and the dependent, the x-axis being the independent variable, y-axis being uh, the dependent, you could have a downward sloping pattern of dots. In this case, the relationship between um, x and y would be negative and the slope of the line would turn out to be negative. Example of such a relationship, 
is that between the weight of a car and its fuel economy. The heavier the car, the poorer its fuel economy, the lower its miles per gallon. Similarly, age versus insurance premium. Generally speaking, the older the person, the lower the insurance premium, uh, up to a point, I suppose. Um, so in general, as you get older, they expect that you'll be a more careful uh, driver and so forth, or you drive better with more experience, whatever. And um, generally speaking, we would expect the insurance premium to be less. You could also have a third situation where there's absolutely no relationship between X and Y. Okay, In that case, if you fitted a line through the uh, independent and, uh, and dependent variable, the plot of the independent and dependent variable, notice that since we have a simple linear regression, we have only one independent variable on the x-axis and one dependent variable on the y-axis. If there's absolutely no relationship between X and Y, then the pattern of dots, the pattern of uh, X and Y positions will be such that when you draw a best fit line through that pattern of dots, the line will be pretty much horizontal, meaning the independent variable tells you absolutely nothing about the dependent variable. Okay, And that's why the slope is zero. Now, one has to be careful when doing simple linear regression because simple linear regression and what Excel does is it tells you the slope of the best fit line that goes through these uh, data points through the one independent and one dependent variable. But it's based on an assumption that there is a linear relationship. Okay. For instance, if you look at these data points that I show you over here, X and Y, and let's see what happens if I draw um, uh, trend lines through this. Okay. So um, if you draw, if you were to draw a trend line through these through these data points, what you would actually find is that the trend line would be horizontal. Okay, so the slope would be almost zero. You can um, you can do that in Excel, and you would find that the slope is almost zero. So you might conclude there is no relationship between x and y. But this is only because you assume that there is a linear relationship. And if you tell, X, tell Excel, yeah, I think there's a linear relationship between X and Y. Tell me what the slope of that relationship is. Excel comes back and says, well, the slope is zero. So you conclude there is no relationship between X and Y. But I have cooked up these numbers in a way where there's actually a very specific relationship between X and Y. And it's actually... A sinusoidal relationship. I, I, I cooked up these numbers in such a way. So this is a non-linear relationship and it got masked simply because I assume there's a linear relationship and with that assumption the slope turns out to be zero. So the reason I'm showing you this example is to point out that even though Excel will work out the math for you, will do the arithmetic for you, there's a fair bit of uh, art and judgment involved in coming up with good regression models. We'll get to those uh, issues uh, later on as we progress through our different video clips. Um, but regression is a very powerful tool. Excel will do the math for you. But you have to be able to interpret the diagnostics that come out of Excel very well in order to use it judiciously and, and properly. As this little example shows you, you could be misled yeah, by making wrong assumptions and uh, and uh, Excel will do the math uh, uh, for you, but you would misinterpret the results. Okay, for the, in the next uh, video segment, we will see actually how to use Excel to do the math, uh, to do lin simple linear regression, and then interpret the uh, Excel output. So this clip was simply to introduce uh, some definitions and basic concepts uh, surrounding simple linear regression.